Hey guys, I'm Jim. I edit photos. Thanks for stopping by. Today I'm in On One Photo Raw 2022 and having a good time with a photo from Wales. And I was editing this photo and going through and using luminosity masks to really target specific areas and get things done just the way I like to get them done, uh, which for me is part of the power of luminosity masking. So I thought I'd walk through that and share some ideas and some things like that uh, in terms of how I use them in a photo. Here's the shot. Now, I've already done some things here in the tone and color section of develop. That's what the base raw file looks like. And there it is now. So I won't bore you by going through all of these things. You can kind of see a little bit of adjustments here with contrast and uh, highlights and shadows, a little bit in temperature and stuff like that. But I'm going to go ahead and go straight to effects and kind of get started. And the first thing I'm going to use is HDR look. And, you know, I like HDR look, but I never want it across the whole photo, and that's why luminosity masking comes in so handy. So you can just click Lumen there, and if you click View, you'll see that it applies it automatically. Remember, white reveals, black conceals, so the stuff that's white or lighter is getting the application of this filter, and the dark stuff is not. So if I turn this off, whoops, I'm still in view mode. If I turn this off, you can see it's not really doing a lot to the photo, and that's primarily because it's showing in what I consider the wrong areas. So I'm gonna go back to view, I'm gonna click invert, and now what's happening is, remember white reveals black conceals, so there's a lot more white, and that's the, the castle and the, the village and all that, that's where I want it to go. However, for me, the best part about using luminosity masks is levels and being able to adjust, uh, I can't even say it, adjust these and drag these sliders around until you get the white and the black to really be very specific in terms of where you want them to be applied across your photo. So I'm kind of doing that now, and uh, you know, I think something about like that looks pretty good. Let me see. Yeah, actually more like that. Let me see about this one. Yeah, look at that. So now I've got HDR look applying like in the ground, the foreground, some on the left, and um, of course on the castle and the village which is really what I wanted. So now if I turn the mask view off, let me hit Z to get out of the masking brush. And if I turn this filter off, see there it is before and there it is after. So the sky is blissfully untouched and I think looks great. And so that's what I really wanted to do. I'm gonna close the masking menu and I just went for 120 there. That's the basic setting and it's fine. I'm not trying to overdo it, but I do wanna use this mask again. So I actually need to come in here and click copy now that I've done that, I'm going to go get another filter, and this one is the Sunshine filter, which I've gotten to really um, enjoy using quite a bit. And so in this case, I'm going to go ahead and move this up to about a 70, and so something about like that. And the warmth goes, the warmth actually stays there. The saturation is going to go up to about a 10. Actually, I might give it a little bit of warmth too. Let me see how that looks. So if you see there, again, it's applying across the entire photo. This is where I don't want it to do that, and so I'm going to go ahead and paste that mask. Remember, I copied it from the previous one, but remember, that's what it looks like. So that's not where I want the sunshine filter. I want to invert it. And so that's where I want the sunshine to be applied is those areas. And so now I've basically copied the mask, uh, uh, pasted it, inverted it. So now the sunshine filter is applying to more of the sky and the water. So if I turn that off, there it is before and there it is after. I think that looks a lot better because I wanted a little bit of that warmth and that sunshine pop to mostly go into the sky, which I could isolate with other masking tools here, but I already had this luminosity mask, and if you look at it, that pretty much covers kind of where I want it to go. So I think that looks nice so far. And while I'm at it, since I've already got it inverted, I'm gonna go ahead and copy that because I'm gonna use that mask again in the same place as I just used it for uh, sunshine. And this time I'm gonna use color balance, and I'm gonna go ahead uh, and let's see, I'll just go ahead and make the adjustments first. So in highlights, I'm going to give it a hue of about 20. And so this is basically, you know, creating a little bit more warmth in the, um, in the highlight areas. Whoops, let me get up here. This is going to about 18, 19, 20 on the amount and the brightness is coming down like a negative 20. And so, uh, maybe a negative 23, 24, something like that. So Currently it's hitting the highlights across the entire photo. We're gonna adjust that here in a second with another luminosity mask. Uh, but the midtones, I'm gonna leave the hue where it is, um, which is kind of in the, well, it is in the red. Uh, I'm gonna go about 11 on the amount. And so again, it's hitting the entire photo. I don't want it to. I'm gonna go ahead and just paste this mask. Remember, I did the inverted version of the mask. And so now this stuff is just hitting 
the areas that are in white, right? So if you remember back on HDR look, I created a pretty extreme difference between black and white. You can go softer, you can adjust these each time. I could come in here and move these levels around if I felt like I needed to, but I'm pretty happy with it. But if you look at color balance now, it's mostly just hitting the sky and a little bit of the foreground as well, because remember, white reveals black conceals. So it's not really hitting the village or the castle very much. It's hitting the water, some of that wall, and of course the sky is completely white. And that's re uh, really where I wanted the color balance to be applied. So one more time before and after, giving it a nice little warm tint, a little bit of magenta kind of. And I did a little bit of magenta over here on develop, but I like the color balance. Um, uh, you know, the option to really control those colors well and then use that luminosity mask to be very targeted and specific. Whereas in develop, of course, that's basically applying globally. So I've got that done. And then um, this is just a couple of touch up sort of edits. I went into tone enhancer and I just bring the highlights down a little bit. So something like a negative 35 or something, you know, something like that. And I'm doing about the opposite with shadows. So I'm going to pull those up. And this is really just kind of a balancing of the light because if you look at before, um, the highlights are really not bad, uh, but the, the area around the village and the castle is just too dark, really. And so I wanted to lift that with shadows. But when I did that, I also wanted to pull the highlights back a little bit, I'm trying to create a little bit more even look to the photo in terms of the light distribution. And Tone Enhancer allows me to do that. And I've said this in previous videos, but I'll often use Tone Enhancer, even though I could make similar adjustments back on the Develop tab, I prefer to use Tone Enhancer. Plus in this case, I already was at negative 100 on highlights and Develop, so I can't go any further there but I can use Tone Enhancer to kind of double up just to make sure I keep them under control. But I think that looks nice. I like that the way it is. And really, I'm just going to wrap it up with a vignette. And there's um, a couple of cool things about the vignette uh, filter that I don't know that I've really spoken much about. But let me get in here and adjust this. So I'm going to do like a negative 45, 46 on that. The size is going to be like a 42. Uh, so let's do that. Feathering, I like to feather vignettes a lot. Um, just that 100, I just... It's, it's basically the transition from where um, it's brighter in the center to where it's darker on the vignette. It, you just make that really smooth. So higher feathering is a smoother transition, whereas actually I can just show you. If I go left, it's just a very hard vignette. That's like a photo frame, really. I like that smooth transition to kind of like not really give it away uh, so much. Um, and then the roundness, I'm going to go like, uh, maybe not that much. Uh, yeah, I'm sorry, uh, negative 40. So maybe something like that, keeping it pretty, um, um, you know, kind of further to the edges, right? A little bit more kind of, I guess, rectangular. Now, here's a couple of things about the vignette filter. Someone had asked me before or said something along the lines of being able to place the center, and they said, I wish you could do that. Well, you can. There's this little button here. So let me hit Z so I get out of that. If you hit this little button here, you can place the vignette. So you see, I just placed the vignette up there. Not what I would do in this photo, but you, if you just click it once and then come and drag, sorry, not drag, but click with your mouse, um, once you activate that, you can put it anywhere. So I can put it there. And what I really want to do is kind of put it over here on the left, kind of uh, more in the castle. And in fact, I think that's probably not quite enough. I just want to go a little off center, maybe something about like that. Um, so that's something pretty cool. But then also you have these different types. So it's in normal, but I was playing with this. And I really like that subtle, and I really like that soft. In fact, I like that soft a whole lot. So these are just vignette types. And I, I got to be honest, I'm not sure what difference it is because it's not changing um, any of my uh, settings here. But that's a normal vignette. This is a subtle vignette. That's a soft vignette. So it's just another option to sort of customize it. Now that I've done that, I actually think I might brighten it a little bit because I don't want it to be too dark. And I might play with size a little bit and just customize that. But the vignettes, um, it's a nice little tool, to be honest. The only thing I wish it had was inner light, like uh, Luminar's vignette. That is the best, I think. Um, comes in really handy, and I would use that. Uh, I do use that every time I use a vignette in Luminar. But um, for vignette, there it is before and after. Just a little bit more focus of the light. But I really wanted to point out the types down here and then also the ability to place the center. And that's my full edit. I noticed a couple of spots in the sky. I will take those out. But that's my before photo, and that's my after photo. And for me, a lot of being able to control that was the luminosity mask, which I used on these three filters, HDR look, sunshine, and color balance, in order to get very specific about where things went, but also customizing the luminosity mask with the levels sliders. That's just huge. It gives you so much control. It's one of the things I love about On One is being able to do those kind of things. And that is my edit here, my friends. Hope it gives you some ideas about how I use this tool 
specifically luminosity masking as well as the other stuff. And uh, hope it helps you if, uh, if you're out editing in on one. And if you're not, check it out. There's a link down below if you want to get a free trial. And I'll catch you in the next video, my friends. Thanks for stopping by and hanging out and all that stuff. I'll see you soon. Take care of yourselves and adios.